You are listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, in today's episode, uh, we talk about something that's been circulating on social media quite a bit lately. Uh, Cosmo did a couple covers where they had some uh, some women on the covers that were what you could say objectively obese, um, and it also said this is healthy. It's triggered a lot of people in the fitness space. So we wanted to cover this and talk all about the health at every size movement and tell the truth about it. Um, we talk about uh, how Cosmo really isn't probably the place you should go for health information. We talk about what health at every size actually means. If you go on their website, what they say is not what's being represented by a lot of these companies. We talk about obesity itself and how there's a wide range of healthy bodies. We talk about how health encompasses a lot of things, um, not just uh, your physical uh, body. And then we talk about what loving yourself really means. Uh, loving yourself is an action, not just uh, a feeling. Now, this episode is brought to you by one of our favorite sponsors, Legion. Now, Legion is the only high-performance supplement company that the number one fitness podcast in the world decided to work with. Uh, we work with Legion because their products are legit. Everything that they say is in the label, uh, in the product, uh, on the label is in the product, okay? It's all third-party tested. Everything's very transparent. Everything's backed by studies. One of my favorite products from Legion uh, is Pulse pre-workout. It's actually legit. It's got caffeine, theanine, citrulline, uh, beta alanine, only things, again, that are proven uh, to work. But there's lots of products. Go check them out. If you've never purchased a Legion product, use the Mind Pump code and get 20% off. Uh, just go check them out. Go to buylegion.com forward slash mind pump. Then use the code mind pump. Get 20% off your first order. And if you're a returning customer, uh, you get double rewards points. Also, um, here at Mind Pump, we have extended our end of year promotion uh, till the 10th of this month. So here's what we did. We took uh, all different MAPS workout programs, combined them, put them together for three different types of people. So what we did is we took... Uh, and made three bundles, each one of these bundles giving you nine plus months of exercise programming. So what that means is every workout is planned out for you. We tell you what exercises to do, how many sets, how many reps. We have videos that teach you how to do proper form. There's blueprints that kind of break it uh, all down for you. So here's the three different bundles. We have one for beginners. Uh, this is called the new to weightlifting bundle. Then we have one for intermediate lifters. So people who've been working out consistently for about six months to a year. That's called the body transformation bundle. And then the third bundle is for those of you that are advanced. If you've been working out for one plus year consistently, you want to take it to the next level, do the new year extreme intensity bundle. All of these also come with one year of free access to our private forum. So you can go in there and ask questions, debate fitness, post videos of your uh, forum to get critiqued. Uh, again, it's a, a year of free access. This particular promotion, uh, I think there's only a few hours left of it uh, as of the airing of this episode. So go check it out. Go to mapsdecember.com. Again, that's maps, M-A-P-S, December.com. Sal, you have to address, uh, you did a post um, yesterday or a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, you did a post and it was the recent article that has gone viral uh, on Cosmo, and it's the all oh, the, the covers. Yeah, the two covers, right? The the health at any size, and you did a really good post uh, talking about it. And I know that there's a, there's a lot of controversy around this conversation. Yeah, I know a lot of people in the fitness space uh, really got irked by it because you know, objectively, on the covers, there were two of them. It, it has two happy looking. Mm -hmm. women who objectively are would be categorized as obese and morbidly in, obese yeah. right right and on the and underneath it says this is healthy and so that irked a lot of uh, health and fitness people and they were you know this is not healthy and I think first off um, it's important to talk about Cosmo the magazine Cosmo yes let's has talk about has this. Cosmo ever been <laughs> yeah. Has it ever what been model on their cover or so whatever that, they promoted has ever been in the health direction? It's never been a bastion. Of yeah. Well, that's why. I, okay, I, I like you went this direction, and this is how, or this is I. This is where I can defend uh, the people that are you know backing it and saying that's not fair because mm -hmm. you know nobody was when we had a you know 105 anorexic coked out model on there you know five years ago or ten years ago. Nobody was saying anything. No, in fact, Cosmo... Yeah, it was like the standard. Yeah, Cosmo promoted the... They called it heroin chic. 
uh, back in the nineties. What? This is, yeah, where where? Wow. You had like remember Kate Moss? Do you remember mm-hmm. her? Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe Doug, you can look up uh, Kate Moss heroin chic uh, Cosmo cover or whatever. But these were uh, covers where you'd have these really emaciated looking models, and they would even have kind of dark circles under their eyes and they'd look kind of whatever. When you see the art, when you see the cover, you'll recognize it because we all grew up. And that's in not 90s. like the heroic term. That's actual heroin. Yeah. The drug. Yeah, yeah, no, they said heroin chic is what was the, was the, the terminology. Really? They actually called yeah, it that? Pretty, now, her- that's now, pretty bold. Cosmo didn't, but people would, would say that about some of these covers. Okay, there um, you go. So you could see, you know, I mean, just, you know, she looks almost immediate. Now, I mean, who knows? This is probably maybe what her normal body looks like or whatever. But it's never been um, it's never been a bastion of health. If you if you read Cosmo to learn about uh, nutrition or exercise or health, you're looking completely uh, to the wrong place. So them posting you know to obese women and saying this is healthy, I mean it's kind of par uh, for the course. I, I I do get why some fitness people you know are, are getting upset. But it's Cosmo. Well, that's number and, one. And here's it's the, the statement of it. I think that was really like triggering and shocking to a lot of the fitness people. Yeah, mm-hmm. but and here's where I'm going to get all them though. And this, uh, I, that's why I really liked the way that Sal wrote about the post. I knew that he would. I think I knew he would articulate the way we felt about it better than I think most fitness professionals. Most fitness professionals are jumping on the bandwagon of it's clickbaity to talk shit about it right now mm-hmm. and to jump all over and bash it, but. To me, how can you do that if you weren't bashing these girls five years ago, five, mm-hmm. ten years ago that are just as unhealthy? It's just a different spectrum. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're sticking their finger down their throat and they're throwing up or they're doing drugs and, and they're not eating and they look like this. And by the way, I'm over generalizing. I know that. Just like I know that there's probably been some healthy people on the magazine. But if we're gonna make a big stink about this girl who's you know eighty to hundred pounds overweight that's on the cover and it's saying healthy. Well, I feel like you have to make a big stink about the girls that were one hundred and five pounds and doing drugs or yeah, throwing. It's got to be consistent. Yeah, and, yeah, or yeah, throwing so, up their food. Right. So, and now here, I don't know if they actually said that they were healthy. They just glamorized them. But you know, look, I typed in, I googled heroin chic. You know, a Wikipedia article comes up, and it says heroin chic was a look popularized in early nineties nineteen nineties fashion, and characterized by pale skin. Dark circles underneath the eyes, a very skinny body, dark red lipstick, stringy hair, and an angular bone structure. Um, so this was like a real thing that you know you would see. And if you do, you guys remember this? This is a Calvin Klein. Uh, you know, uh, this was uh, what's her name, Kate Moss, and the Calvin Klein uh, advertisement at the, back in the early '90s. I remember back then it kind of caused a, a, a little bit of a stir. I guess the point I'm trying to make here is to start with, Cosmo is. Not, uh, they could say this is healthy all they want, um, yeah. but I tell you what, I could pull, I could pull the last ten articles, pull up yeah. their diet recommendations and workout recommendations. They're good at and they're terrible. Things up. Yes, <laughs> they're good at making yeah. things up. Yeah. and it's all it's all totally and completely uh, terrible. It's all wrong. It's not uh, true. Absolutely. Now that being said, um, there is this m- movement um, that they you know they call the health. At every uh, size movement, or any size movement, I should say. Now, here's the thing: when when we talk about this, we do get messages from people who are saying that the <laughs> message, the real um, health at any size movement message, has been hijacked and bastardized by marketers. It has, and it has. I know. I uh, so the first time we came out and we talked about, it, I think I I was probably the most, uh, I mean, uh, vocal about how I felt about it, and of mm-hmm. course, I got tons of DMs of people, and. Uh, you know, complete transparency up until that point. I'd never gone to the official website that is that promotes this message and where it, it, it's it originated from. And when I did and I read what it had to say, <clears throat> I agree with it. Mm. I think it's actually really good and it's a really good message. Um, but it's completely been bastardized and it's not that. And that what we're seeing on Cosmo is not that at mm-hmm. all, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, the difference is so health and any size movement, if you actually read about it, and some of the stuff I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know, but a lot of it is stuff that we talk about and preach on the podcast. And it says things like that the diet culture, right? So the culture of extreme dieting and weight loss pills and you know that kind of stuff um, has led to more problems for a lot of people. Disordered eating, mm-hmm. hating your body, uh, you know, feeling uh, inadequate or, or extremely insecure. Um, these are all problems. Diets, uh, at least the way that we've been marketed diets um, and the way we've told that, they, that we should do them, they don't work. They really don't. And the reason why, first off, statistically speaking, 
diets don't work for something like 90 something percent of the people that ever try them. And the reason why they don't work, again, this is what we talk about on the podcast all the time. They don't focus on loving your body, taking care of yourself, and real fundamental changes to your behaviors. They're all about these kind of short-term extreme fixes, and they all do focus on self-hate. You're fat, you're disgusting, uh, you need to change that, do this extreme <coughs> diet, You know, do this cabbage diet, do this HCG diet, do this whatever diet, and, and fix that about yourself. So the health at any size movement, the, the actual website talks a lot about kind of healthy behaviors, taking care of yourself, exercising in a way that's healthy, not overtraining, not overworking yourself like we've mm -hmm. seen a lot of people do. But what's happened is marketers have taken this and the way that they've used it is it's basically saying, um, you know, okay, you're obese, that's still healthy and it's all good. It's everything's fine. Yeah, right, right. That's not an issue. Let's ignore all the health markers and concerns that you know physicians have. Right, and and that's just false. Objectively speaking, okay, uh, obesity by itself, okay, by itself. If you take somebody who is let's say sixty or seventy pounds uh, overweight, um, and I would say over fat. The reason why I'm saying that is because BMI, according to BMI, I'm overweight, right? But I carry a lot of muscle. So we'll say over fat, right? You take somebody who's uh, you know 60 to 70 pounds over fat, they could have, uh, they could not smoke, they could have all these other, everything can be controlled. The obesity itself is- More a, dangerous than almost anything else. Yeah, it's still a risk factor. If yeah. you took that it's same- It's not just a risk factor, it's one of the biggest risk factors. It, right, and if you, took, uh, if you took that same person and you had them lose that 60 to 70 pounds of over fat, they would be uh, objectively healthier, right? Mm -hmm. uh, fat itself is a hormone sensitive tissue. When you have a lot of it, your body responds differently to hormones like insulin, estrogen, and, and men, testosterone uh, gets affected, growth hormone gets affected and gets changed. Extra weight on the body like that is, uh, which, which is body fat, is extra weight that is not supporting your weight, right? So if you have 50 pounds of extra muscle on your body, yeah. that extra muscle- it provides a function there. Yeah, it stabilizes your joints, uh, you're stronger, you, you can move more, you got a faster metabolism as a result of it. If you have 50 pounds of extra body fat, that body fat just sits on you and you're just moving around with this extra weight uh, on your body. Now, do you think some of, some of what plays into this too is this idea that some some people believe that they were genetically destined to be obese? That's mm -hmm. so false. Okay, so evolutionarily speaking, there is no, there was nothing that happened that changed our genetics to cause obesity. Uh, yes, there's a range of weight. So you, you you find, you know, you could see a wide range of weight that's 20, 30 pounds. But 70 pounds, 80 pounds, 100 pounds overweight, 60 pounds overweight, that almost did not exist until the kind of the 20th century, or at least the back half of the 20th century. It just it just wasn't common. You know, you you go around in societies in the early 1900s and before, and you just didn't see that. In fact, you didn't see that until processed food really became a big part uh, of our culture. And uh, you know, I, I love bringing this up. Right, you could look up. Back in the day, uh, circuses, traveling circuses were a thing, and they used to do this thing where they would have what they called the freak show. It's kind of terrible, but they would have people who you know looked different, you know had deformities, and then people would pay to, to look at them, right? And a common uh, I don't know act in some of these freak shows were the the, the fat man or the fat woman. So it was this obese person that people would be like, oh my gosh, look at that, right? It looks so crazy. If you look up pictures of the the circus fat man from the 1800s, that same person today would walk around Walmart and would blend right in. Yeah, mm -hmm. It wouldn't be a big deal. But it was such a big deal in the 1800s that people paid money to go look at this, to see it because it was so insane. Yeah. I mean, well, we're in a world of abundance now. You know, this is something that uh, is different. It's a different landscape. And so, uh, you know, what what used to be like not not as common is definitely has taken over. It's it's very it's very easy to, to find food and to be able to access food, uh, you know, in, in, in large amounts. And so this has created a whole new problem that, uh, you know, we have to account the fact that it can be a problem. You can't overindulge just like you can overindulge drinking drinking or you know taking drugs or you can you can do harm to your body by overindulgence. Yeah, you oh, know, you're addi you're addicted. 
no matter how you draw it yeah. up, you're addicted to uh, food, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think what, why it's, it's so much more controversial or we're, we're hearing so much more about this versus like what we referred to earlier as like these, you know, anorexic looking girls is that it's harder to prove that, right? You could be a very skinny girl mm -hmm. and actually not, not be anorexic, not be doing heroin, not doing that. You could be on the cover of that magazine and be 105, but it's impossible for you to be 250 pounds and it not be obvious that there's a food addiction there. Sure. You didn't get to 250 pounds without obsessively over consuming yeah. for a long period of time. That doesn't happen overnight to anybody. Right. So you have been addicted to food for a very long time. We can't prove that with somebody who is 115 pounds. You could be 115 yeah, They could be sick. They could right. Be, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's, not, it's, it's not as obvious. So I feel like everybody is jumping all over this because it's more obvious. Well, also, you got to consider this, right? The market is shifting. So today we're almost at the point where a majority of Americans are considered uh, obese and a good chunk are considered, uh, is, was it severely obese? I think it is, right? A good chunk. It's something like, I don't know, 15, 20% of Americans or something like that. So now you have the market, which is now getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So, you know, the people that they're, you know, and that's who you're selling to, right? So you're selling, Cosmo's selling that, selling to that. So doing stuff like that's going to sell more magazines. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, for example, well, just exa like any other addict, you you want to hang out with other addicts so you feel better about it, right? So if it's I'm normalized, if I exactly, if I'm going to subscribe to this magazine, I don't want to look at these skinny bitches all the time. I want to look at somebody who looks like me and me feel good about my food addiction, right? And not feel like I actually have a problem, right? Right. So uh, I'll give you guys an example. So I, you know, I have family that lives in Italy, and I know when I travel over there, if I can't get a so here in the states, if I buy a T-shirt, it's a large. When I buy a shirt in Europe, yeah. it's an extra or double X large, yeah, yeah. same size. Right. So our clothes sizes are different, our food servings are different, and it's all starting to match kind of the market. But yeah, back to the the food addiction thing. You know, it's I, I when we say food addiction, I think some people are like, they, they, oh, that's not like an addiction, like you know, like you know, heroin or cocaine or alcohol or whatever. It is in the sense that you're medicating right. uh, with food. This is what leads to this issue, is that we start to medicate with food. And also in the sense that food has been engineered now to have drug-like properties, mm -hmm. right? So I've used this example so many times on the podcast, but I'll use it again because I think it's a really powerful one. But if, if, I, were to, if, if I were to take the average person and give them five plain baked potatoes and told them to eat them all within an hour, most people wouldn't be able to do that. But if I gave you a bag of Lay's potato chips, which contains five potatoes in there, yeah. most people could eat it. You can get through that easy. No problem. So food has been engineered to be so palatable that it's almost drug-like. Mm -hmm. So you have this drug-like quality to food. It's convenient. It doesn't require work to get. You don't have to cook it or make it anymore. It's super convenient. It's inexpensive. And then you're stressed or whatever. Yeah, it gives and you, you crazing, uh, cravings and, and, you know, it provides comfort when you're depressed, it, you know, you're stressed out, you're not feeling so great. Like it's something that you, you're you seeking out to to make you feel better. And that's the same thing with any of these drugs. So, so I, I learned this as a trainer. I know you guys have too. I, I, we talk about this all the time. When you're working with someone, anybody actually who wants to lose weight, but especially when they have to lose a lot of weight, you're not going to be successful at all. Unless you're able to, unless they open up and you're dealing with the the, the root drivers of psychological issues yeah. that are causing it, studies show that obese people who diet, and what I mean by diet is change their nutrition, and work with a therapist are far more successful mm -hmm. than people who just diet. Right. So what you're looking at isn't is oftentimes, most of the time, root causes people are damaging themselves because there's some issues that are that are underneath the surface right boredom insecurity depression all these anxiety things, yeah, all this stuff is happening and instead of medicating with you know something that we've demonized now like cocaine heroin things like that your choice is food because it's widely accepted and it's okay and that's 100% uh, correct food is an accepted drug right. we we all all of us at one point have abused uh, food. Now, I do want to be clear, by the way, and I think this is an important thing to, to point out. Um, I don't want to come across like we're judging people who are severely obese as the most unhealthy people uh, on, on, in America. Well, no, uh, because no, here's here's the argument on the other side of that. What yeah. we can't measure and we don't know. Okay, and let's and I know in our forum this that that post went viral, and I believe I don't know if you guys saw. I think Sandra brought up that she follows the girl. Mm. Uh, she follows one of those two girls, and she's like really flexible, and she does like strength stuff. And so maybe this girl's not 
not as unhealthy as an, an average 250 pound woman right. could be. And maybe she's even technically healthier than the guy that's on the cover of Men's Health, who is 250 pounds, 3% body fat, steroided out of his mind, beats his fucking girlfriend at home, yeah, freaking yeah. has all these insane. Enlarged his heart. Yeah, right. Stuff. I mean, so maybe she is actually healthier than that guy, and we can't measure that and say that. that now, that's the problem. The problem is comparing person against person. Yeah. Rather, what you should do is say to yourself, okay, this woman who we're talking about, who's flexible and works out, who's 250 pounds, would her health improve if she was, let's say, 170 pounds, right? right. Mm -hmm. and, and she did it the right way. I want to make sure I say that, right? She did it the right way. Would her health objectively improve? It would. Her mm -hmm. joints would improve. Her heart uh, health would improve. Her hormone sensitivities uh, would improve. Everything would improve simply because uh, she lost uh, some body fat. But yeah, it is, you know, again, uh, we do need to be clear that there's this there's a there's a wide range of well and the of opposite health. is true to the analogy that I gave right the right. guy if he got off of steroids put on 4 or 5% body fat stopped doing some of the bullshit he was doing at home he would be technically a healthier person exactly and there's also this range look you can be a healthier obese and a a, a less healthy obese right you could be a healthier lean and a much less healthy lean right so the only thing you can really say is is really apply it to yourself and look genetics play a big role too some people can be 70 pounds overweight um, and suffer less health issues than somebody who's just 15 pounds mm -hmm. overweight. Don't compare people against other people. It's You have to look at just yourself. What, there, there's so many genetic differences in the way that bodies even look and present themselves and how they carry weight, too, which... You know, so that's why it's it's such an individual thing. But uh, you, you know, you, it, like body fat itself as being an objective, uh, you know, measurement is something to consider. Like it's it, if you do reduce, you know, down to to a healthier range, it is going to make an impact. It is, um, but yeah, it's look. Uh, you can people can can you look at someone and determine whether or not they're healthy or unhealthy? I think in some cases you can say that person could be healthier. Uh, that person could be less healthy. Um, I also think, why? Why do that to, to other people? Really right. look uh, look at yourself. You most certainly can't compare that person to another person. No, healthy. no. Not, I mean, not just visually, because that's, that's the thing, that, and that's the thing that I think we talk about. I mean, in extremes, about. maybe, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Totally. Yeah, well, because well, health, health, when you say health, that is a, that's a, a big sphere of things. Yes. Yeah. You know, they could have terrible relationship health. They could have ter terrible emotional, spiritual, all these other health markers can be off the charts, but look amazing on magazines, or they can look horrible on a magazine from a, a body fat percentage wise, but then have those other boxes checked amazing. They're great. They're a great mother. They're great at right. You know, they have. The, they just have issues with food. Yeah, they just have issues with food. Yep, so yep. this whole idea that uh, I think we use, and that's why, like the, the for the fitness professionals that were triggered by this, and they went out and they and they came after it really hard. It's like you know. Who, who cares? This is a well, this business is into, into marketing and selling magazines. They shouldn't be anybody's guide to what is healthy. Nor should Instagram. Mm. Has there ever been a cover with just an example of somewhere where they literally stated this is healthy? Mm. Oh, I don't like, know that I've ever even seen that. No, I, I mean they did that. That's with an this is a statement. That's an interesting point. Yeah, you're saying. right. You're right. I mean, I, and they were obviously look. That's it's obvious to me they were being controversial. Yeah, they knew that it would cause and stir. I'm of sure course. they're selling record numbers of of magazines because yeah, you can't. I mean, it's such like it's not an objective thing to look at somebody and be like, hey, you're healthy. Right. You're an example. I'm going to put you out there. Right. Right. You don't but, know. Right. I, you know, I like what you were saying, Adam, about this this fear of health. It encompasses quite a bit. I'll, look, I've, again, we've all said this. Some of the least healthy people I've personally known were worked in the fitness industry, worked in the fitness space. Right. Yeah. People who uh, had ex followed extreme diets. They don't sleep at all. They you know, took drugs. You know, lots of anabolic steroids and diet pills and uh, terrible relationships, narcissistic, uh, or had bad, you know, uh, relationships with friends and family because they were so focused on how they looked. Um, they were just so unhealthy. But if you just looked at them, oh, they looked amazing. You'd be like, oh man, look at that guy's biceps, and he's so lean, or whatever. You know, they 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 seem to be healthy. That's not how it works. Also, here's the other thing too. You know, uh, what's that one saying? Like, don't judge someone because they sin differently than you. Um, I like that state that you now we take out the word sin. It's like, you know, don't judge someone because they do something that's unhealthy differently than you, the way you do things that are unhealthy. Right, right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So right. 
you could look at someone who's obese and you could say, oh, they have a bad relationship with food. Yeah. Um, but then if you're an asshole about it, it's like, hey. Dude, you, nobody has like nobody's everything perfect. perfectly balanced. Yes. Well, that's you know? why I love, you shared that study that came out this last year, right? About the cigarettes versus relationships. Mm. Like, that's why I, li I loved talking about that study because that's an example. If you were to compare somebody who maybe just never sees their family, they work all the time and they're busy, they're very successful, but they have a terrible relationship with their mother and their family and friends mm -hmm. because they're so focused on being successful, but they look all in shape and you compare that person to the person who is smoking, I don't remember how many cigarettes a day it was. Yeah, it was like to, 10 cigarettes a day or something. Yeah, like, like 10 cigarettes a day and you go like, hey, who do you think is healthier? You'd be like, oh my God, this guy over here who's got all the financial shit going and he looks fine, but this person who's smoking all these cigarettes every day they're probably going to die early because of that. But in reality, that's actually unhealthy. I know. They showed that the bad relationships was just as bad. Right. Crazy. Just as bad. Here's the other thing, too. And this is now I'm going to speak out to the fitness uh, people on social media and the fitness experts. Okay. You have to, first off, don't allow yourself to be triggered by your own insecurities. And what I mean by that is maybe not insecurities with yourself, but your insecurities with, with your profession. So you see an article on Cosmo with an obese woman that says this is healthy, it'll trigger you because it's counter to what you preach and what you talk about. But put that aside for a second and remember what your real goal is. What's your real goal? Your real goal is to help people, right? So use that as a way to communicate in a way that's empathetic that, you know, what's that saying? You can attract more flies with honey than you can with, with, right, shit. with shit. I see all these fitness professionals who are like, no, fat is unhealthy. And they're and okay, some of, a lot of stuff they're saying is true, but they're not helping anybody. And if anything... They may have someone who's struggling with weight, but not want to follow them anymore, not want to listen to them anymore because right. they're coming at them so hard. I would mm -hmm. never, when I ran gyms and I dealt with real people in front of me, would you ever hammer somebody who's obese who came into your gym? Never. In that way? I would never no, do you that. You want to encourage them to come back. Right. Absolutely. Well, not to, not to mention, it could be argued that this extreme was necessary to get us closer to the middle of where sure. we needed to be anyways. Mm -hmm. Because nobody was in up was in uproar, like I said, 10, 15 years ago when you had all these girls that were on the covers of magazines that were unhealthy in the first place. Mm -hmm. Nobody said anything back then, but yet people know it. And obviously there's a lot of people that are aware of it today. And this is now the other extreme. It is. You know, and so hopefully we find somewhere in the middle where it is a little bit more healthy than what we've seen. We've just seen these extremes, which extremes is what sells, right? It is. And oh, now yeah. here's the part that gets on my nerves that I don't it really annoys the hell out of me is when they twist it and they sell it as this is self-love, okay? This is me loving uh, myself. It's not. It is not loving yourself. Loving yourself, let's take yourself out of the equation. It's a, imagine you're raising a child. You're raising your kid. You love your kid. Your kid wants to eat candy and donuts uh, every day. Right. And you don't let them. Why not? Yeah, because you love them. Right. Okay? The, the, it, loving them doesn't mean you give them whatever they want all the time and you let them indulge and, and destroy their health. It'd be like my kid coming up to me and say, hey, I want to smoke cigarettes because I like them. And I'm like, well, because I love you, I'll let you do whatever you want. I'm saying, no, sorry, buddy. You're not allowed to do that. Right. Loving yourself means you have a sense of discipline and you also check some of your indulgences. This is part of what it means to be human and to and to understand these things. Love isn't just a feeling. I think people confuse love with the feeling of it's an action. happiness and yeah. yeah. Love, love is an action. It is not a feeling. It's Absolutely. Action, right? yes. It's and it's not like. Yeah. Like is different than love. Like, do you like your spouse all the time? I don't I don't even like my kids all the time. I love them all the time. I never stop loving them. Right. But there's definitely times I don't like them, yeah. but I love them and the actions my actions uh, show that. So I think what happens is people confuse love with not hating themselves. So you have somebody that's obese and they've maybe they've done all the, the crazy dieting, the restriction, they've hated their body, they've been insecure. And then they finally, you know, at one point they read this 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 Cosmo or they hear this twisted version of health at any size and they say, you know what? I'm done hating myself. I'm gonna eat whatever I want and just that's it. Now I love myself. That's not love. You might not hate yourself anymore, yeah. but you're not loving yourself. In fact your actions are actually showing that you're yeah. still hating yourself. You've, right. you've taken the first step to kind of start, you know, really focusing on not hammering yourself so bad, which is a, an important step, but that's not where it stops. It's true. And love is also honest, yeah. right? So again, take yourself, because the reason why I say take yourself out of the equation is because when we're talking about ourselves, I think we have a tough time being objective, but when you talk about an outside well, person- yeah, your ego gets in the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but when you talk about someone you care about, uh, it's easier to understand. So let's, love is honest, right? So I, uh, you know, I love my brother, for example, right? If he came to me 
And he said, hey, Sal, um, you know, uh, be honest. Am I is, physically, am I healthy? Now, I, I know I'm going to hurt his feelings if I tell him the truth. Let's say he's obese, but I love him. So I'm going to say, listen, I love you. But yeah, physically, you're just, you're not taking care of yourself. You yeah. need to take care of yourself yeah. a little bit better, right? Now, turn that into yourself. Love is also honest. Now, it's not hating yourself, but it is being honest. So what does that mean? That means you can look in the mirror and say to yourself, right now, my body does not, it, it reflects the fact that I haven't been taking care of myself well. Now, that's different than hating yourself. You don't mm-hmm. want to hate yourself. Don't look in the mirror and be like, I hate this person. Also, don't identify with the fact that you're maybe overweight or, or whatever. That's not... Who you are doesn't define you, it's just your body. But you can be honest and you can say, I haven't taken care of myself like I should. I'm going to start loving myself through action. And when you do that, what does that look like? Well, it looks like you eat right. You eat in a way that cares for you. You're active because it's better for you. By the way, what are the results of that? Forget the physical, uh, the, the cosmetic uh, you know, effects, the aesthetic effects. Let's forget of that for, for a second. What are the other effects? When you start to eat right, you start to be more active, you feel better, you actually start to treat people differently. Mm -hmm. Your mood uh, increases, like all these different factors. Yeah, your relationships uh, improve, the your productivity improves. Like it just it 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 just compiles as like a snowball effect once you really start working on yourself. Right. Now, can you lose weight? Can you change your 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 aesthetic uh, self to make it look quote unquote better, but do it in a way that that reduces your health? Of makes course, it, yeah. absolutely. Of course, you know you could look in the mirror and be like, I hate my body so much. I'm gonna go chain myself to the treadmill. And I'm gonna eat you know uh, once every other day. I'm gonna take diet pills or whatever, and uh, and that's that. Um, well, that's also not uh, loving yourself. So that's where I have the issue is when people. I remember once, I uh, years ago, uh, I was at a, uh, a company dinner with my ex-wife. We were sitting at um, a big table. I think it was a Christmas dinner, and everybody's you know introducing their spouses or whatever. And I said, "Oh, I'm a you know I own a personal training studio." And uh, as and I know, whenever I say that, whenever I used to say that to, and I'm sure you guys experience this, whenever mm. you say that to a group of people who are not in the fitness space, oh, yeah. especially if you're eating dinner or I something, know. you're gonna get comments immediately. Yeah, people yeah. automatically start to feel a little insecure. Like mm. I'm sure they're thinking, "Put is the he, cupcake back, yeah. right away." Is yeah. he watching yeah. me? Is he whatever? This is my day off, my yeah. cheat day. Yeah, yeah. So, exactly. explaining themselves. <laughs> yeah, so I said that, and I then, never you know, usually do this. And I was used to the, you know, I was used to that, right? I was used to the, the, the ways that people's attitudes would change or whatever. But I said that, and then. As we're eating and drinking and people are making comments, there was one lady in particular who's like, I'm going to have another roll of bread. And she'd look right at me and laugh. And, you know, I, I was used to it. So I'm like, well, no problem, whatever. So as the, the night goes on, she says, you know, she goes, uh, she had a few drinks. So, and then she was kind of a little loose. And she says, you know, Sal, I had a friend who was a fitness fanatic. She worked out all the time. She ate perfectly. And at 55 years old, she got breast cancer and then she died. And she goes, and I tell you what, when that happened, I said to myself, I'm just going to enjoy life and do whatever I want and eat whatever I want because it's totally, it's not worth it or whatever. And I, you know, I sat there quietly. I felt my ego get fired up a little bit, but I sat there and I said, look, I said, nobody knows the future. You could, I could walk out tonight, uh, get my car and get an accident and die. I don't know that. I said, it's not about necessarily living longer. It's about living better. It's not a punishment. It's a treat. It's how you take care of yourself. So, so if you were to exercise now, you're not killing yourself because you hate yourself. You're doing because you're taking care of yourself. You're enjoying it, and your quality of life improves. So what you're doing right now may feel like you're saying to yourself that you love yourself, but it may not be. In reality, taking care of yourself is really loving yourself. It's an yourself. investment. It's That's the right. same thing that you, the analogy you give with, with the child. Like, you know, uh, giving him candy one day is also not going to kill him either. Right. But you continue to do that w- by not doing that and teaching him to take care of himself. You're investing it in, in them long term. And that's just an example that you love them. Yeah. And you know what? I will say, I, uh, you know, I'm sh- I'll am i put some of the blame on the, the fitness industry at large for messages like the one that Cosmo just put out. I mean, mm-hmm. let's be honest. Mm-hmm. The fitness industry for a long time has promoted it wrong. Yeah, this is basically a backlash to that. Mm-hmm. That's what I say. It's just the opposite. Mm-hmm. We're just swinging the other way because, I mean, we've been saying that since we we started this. Uh, I mean, I re- uh, to me, I'll, I'll never forget the experience of getting in the competitive world because up into that, I was, I was really oblivious to this. And truth be told, even as a personal trainer and in the space for already a decade before, I really looked up to that community thinking that this is the elite of fitness people. I mean, look, the, their bodies reflect it, right? So they must be 
some of the healthiest, most disciplined, dialed yeah. in people I'll ever meet. And then when I got into that group and I was accepted into this, you know, bodybuilding community and I started to meet people and lots of people I liked, a lot of people I thought that were great people, that were smart people, that maybe did have some pretty good relationships. But what I found was that I saw more issues in that community than I had seen previously in the previous 10 years of helping average people, which include these oh morbidly obese people and average people that have just are overweight mm -hmm. the people that i that i was competing with on the competitive level that were walking around with six to seven percent body fat most of the year were some of the unhealthiest people that i ever met in my life it blew my mind right so uh it definitely is a backlash um obesity by itself on its own uh ma it makes your health worse you would be healthier physically speaking objectively if you weren't obese but there's many factors that play into your health. And if you're a fitness professional or a fitness influencer, be careful how you communicate this message. Don't let it trigger you. Um, do it in a way that you're going to help people rather than uh, hurt people. And then the last thing I'll say is this. Don't look at Cosmo as a place to... <laughs> that is not your place for health. That They do not... Information. Yeah, they don't talk about health properly. They don't exemplify health. They have terrible information. If you like to read it because you like to look at the pictures and the ads, that's fine. But other than that, um, you know, throw it away. Yeah. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Call Doug a snack. He's a snack, man. Okay, Isn't that a full meal? Yeah, yeah. Mm. No, not quite. Just a snack. And so what's Justin then? Oh, yeah. Justin's a Justin's a super I'm turkey meal. dinner. <laughs> <laughs> what are you, bro? You're uh, the heaviest one. I know. I, you know, He's I, a buffet. I'm totally. It's a buffet. I've been, <laughs> <laughs> fuck off, Doug. Feeds a family of four. <laughs> I've been. T 